you may look at this box and see a collection of junk and you're not wrong but I look at this box and I see a challenge or at least I'm trying to it kind of looks like a box of junk to me at the moment as well with something really sticky and disgusting on it what is that Welcome back to the channel if you've been here before and hello if you're new. So a couple of weeks ago I was going through my crafting space just doing a little bit of cleaning up and some rearranging and it turns out I keep a lot of crap. I mean I already knew that. I tend to hoard things because quote it might come in handy later and I also like to upcycle or recycle things whenever I can. The issue is when I keep things for craft projects, but I don't actually make those craft projects, junk tends to accumulate to the point where I have a little mini landfill in the corner of my room. In order to preserve the natural environment of my crafting space, as well as my sanity, I'm challenging myself to transform this trash into treasure. Using the term treasure very loosely here. And I'm going to do that by incorporating all of this into various crochet projects. The challenge will also double as an opportunity to use up some of the scrap yarn I've got lying around because I tend to thrift a lot of my yarn and I'm also fortunate enough to be given some by friends and family. I do have a lot that I don't use in regular like amigurumi making so I've got stuff like this, like this I got at it. This I got at a thrift shop and I was given things like this which I don't really use in amigurumi, so I don't really have a use for. And for that reason, I'm going to try and use a lot of this sort of stuff up in my crochet challenge projects. I wasn't actually going to go through the box on camera, but let's do that. It might be a bit of fun. So basically, I've just put a whole heap of stuff in here. There's, you see that? <laughs> There's actually more of this in my crafting room. I didn't bring it all. So I've got things like, I don't know, keys and pendants maybe. Um, hair rollers because obviously if there's one thing my hair needs it's to be more curly what else have I got a light um, some pegs we've got some beads and some hair clips some of this is very noisy I hope that's not too bad on the mic um, I have some empty soda water bottles I'll just put them on the floor for now a box, whatever these are, um, oh, a roll of foam, why wouldn't you keep that? Um, what else have we got, these, this used to be bubbles, they were for my niece and nephew, so they had uh, bubbles with the, bubble blower, with the bubble blower in them, again why I kept them, who knows, um, actually I don't even know what's in here. Yeah. Marbles. Surely we can do something with those. Um, book binders, a ring, an old honey tub. We'll just put that on the floor for now. Oh, and I also have a bit of an old pool noodle and like a third of a yoga mat. <laughs> so we're going to have some fun working out what we can do with those. As of right now, this series is going to be in a sort of design along with me format. A couple of weeks ago, depending on when this goes out, it might have been two or three weeks, I did a Stitches inspired hoodie and I really enjoyed making that. So I wanted to do something similar, but I didn't want to do another really big project like a piece of clothing again. That's why I came up with this idea. So I can still do that sort of design along with me format, but it's not something that's going to take me weeks and weeks to do. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> However, if there is a particular project that you guys like, let me know which one it is because providing I have the necessary materials left over, I would be happy to recreate that for you in my usual pattern and tutorial style format. Because this is going to be my first junk project, I'm going to keep it nice and simple and I'm going to go with this ring here because I think I've already got a cool idea for something I can do with it. Going forward, however, I do plan to incorporate multiple pieces of junk into the one project and maybe get a little bit more complex and detailed as I go. 
But for now, we are sticking with this, so let's get right to it. This is the ring that I've chosen to start off my junk crochet series. Kind of simple, but I think it's better to start simple and then work our way up to more detail and complexity. Originally what I planned to do was make a sort of mobile out of this. I don't know what I was going to make the mobile of, but it was going to be a mobile. But I've actually had another idea since then, so I think I'm going to go with that. I'm not going to tell you what it is right now, I'll leave the reveal to the end, or towards the end, because you'll probably guess it as we go along. But I'm going with my second idea. Another thing I was planning to do in this series, because it is a design along with me, is actually design something and show you guys my process. But with this part, all I'm crocheting is a flat circle. And I really didn't see the point in getting out my sketchbook just to draw a circle and say, yeah, this is what I'm crocheting. So that was going to be a bit boring. For this part, I am just going to crochet the circle, a nice flat circle to whatever size this is. I didn't measure it. I'm just going to wing it. And what I'm going to do, let's put that there. Spidey can hold on to that. I mentioned in the intro that I also want to use up some scrap yarn and I'm going to be using this 12 ply yarn. I have a couple of colors, there's more in the bag over there. I got this for another project. I don't even remember what that project was now, but now I just have 12 ply yarn lying around and I'm not doing anything with it. So I'm going to use some of it up. And I don't even know what size hook to use for this. Let's have a look. Mm, a 5.5 millimeter hook. You know what, we'll go a five, we'll, we'll grab a five. Where is my five millimeter hook? Here we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this using double crochet. So I'm probably going to start off with 12 double crochet in a magic circle. I feel very disorganized. I'm usually a lot more organized than this when I'm doing patterns. <laughs> I have everything ready first, but I'm sort of winging it here. Okay, we're going to make a magic circle. And then into the magic circle, I'm just going to do 12 double crochet. I think I mentioned this at the start. How many? One, two, three, four, five. Lost count there for a sec. I think I mentioned this at the start, but I don't actually plan on doing a pattern and tutorial for these junk projects to begin with. But if you see a project that you like and you would like a tutorial on, just let me know in the comments because I'd be happy to make one for you, providing if I've still got the stuff to make it, or I can probably DIY it and you know do something very, very similar. And I've lost count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. And after this point, I'm just going to continue increasing out by 12 each round until I reach the diameter of my ring here. So I'll put that aside again and I'll grab my stitch marker. What I'm going to do is just have a look at the sizing and see how much more I need to go. Hmm. I might do one more round. It might need two, but I'll start with one and then I think I'll check it again. Now that that's done, I'm just going to double check the sizing again. Bring that back in. And I think we are good. Now what I'm going to do is using single crochet, I'm going to join this piece to the ring itself. I was thinking of putting one single crochet in, in each stitch. So I'd do one single crochet to secure it to the ring. But I think that might end up here. We'll do one stitch and see how that goes. Uh, let's 
do a second. Mm, I was thinking you might be able to see too much of the ring if I just did one single crochet in each stitch, but it actually might be okay. I'll continue it for a few more stitches and see how we go. You know, that's actually not too bad. I think we'll continue on like this. And that is the last stitch. I think it worked out not too bad. I would have liked the circle to be a little bit flatter, a bit more taut, so I probably should have increased only by six in the final round, but you know, it's not too bad. I can live with it. What I'm going to do now is just weave in my ends. I'll weave in this part here, but also the one from my magic circle. And now that that's done, I've got to decorate this thing, which I don't know how I'm going to do. I've got a couple of ideas, but I'm not sure which one to go with. All right, now that I've decided that I'm going to make some little pots to go on my background here, I'm going to start making them. And I'm going to just wing it. I don't normally do that. I like to have a pattern that I write down as I go, just in case I want to use it later or I make a mistake, I can go back and fix it. But I'm being a bit of a rebel today. I'm just going to wing it. Yes, I feel very rebellious sitting on the floor with my hot water bottle in my dino jammies. Okay, we're going to start off with a magic circle, but I actually plan to, from this point, work in rows rather than rounds because I don't want a full circular pot. I only want half of it because I'm going to sew it to the background. And instead of working in a continuous spiral, I'm just going to chain and turn. Then for row number three, I'm just going to increase out again. For the first two rounds, I increased out by three, but I think for the next two, I'm going to increase out by six. So the base of my pot gets larger faster. So let's try that and see how it goes. Right, let's see how far this sticks out on my background. I think that's far enough because what I plan to do is increase out a little bit as I build the height on the pot as well. So it's going to angle upwards and out like so. So I think that's okay. I will at this point work in the back loops so I can then begin adding some height chain and turn. No, I'm working in the front loops, not the back loops, the front loops. And now let's just add a little bit of height. I've just finished off the main body of the pot, but what I've decided to do is to create the rim in a different color. So I'm going to use this blue, which is another 12 ply yarn I have, and I'm just going to join that. And what I'm thinking is to create the rim so it sticks out a little bit and then sort of goes back in on itself. It'll probably make more sense when I actually crochet it, but I'm going to try that and see how it looks. Okay, 
When I first started making the rim section, I worked in the back loop. So that's left the front loops exposed here. And what I'm going to do now is chain and turn my work. And what I'm going to do is join this last row that I've done to those exposed front loops to finish off the rim. So it should look like this. And I'm also going to add a little bit of stuffing as I go just to give it a bit of shape. Ooh, what do you reckon? Am I gonna have enough yarn to finish off here? We shall see. I think I might sew these last three stitches together. <laughs> I've got three stitches to go. Yeah, just enough, <laughs> just enough. Okay, I'm gonna finish stuffing this part here. And I'll just weave this tiny little end in. And now that the pot's finished, what I'm going to do is crochet a bit of dirt <laughs> that will sit at the top. And on top of that dirt, I'm going to make some plants. The widest part of my pot here was 33 stitches across. What I'm going to do is just using some brown 12 ply yarn I have, just follow the same pattern I basically just used, working in rows rather than rounds and increase out to 33 stitches. Now that I've finished the dirt part, I'm going to make some plants. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. I'm going to do some sort of hanging plants and for that I'm going to use a pattern that I've already made um, a while ago, probably a couple of months at this point. I made a hanging basket pattern and tutorial and I'm going to use the string of pearls pattern for that and it's really simple. All you basically do is create some chains and then do a popcorn stitch. If you want a full tutorial on that, I'll put a link for the pattern in the <sighs> description. That's the word. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description so you can follow along with that if you want to. Um, besides these string of pearls, I'm just going to do a couple of really simple plants. But we'll start with these ones. I'm just going to create a few more of those. So now that I've made a whole bunch of these things, I'm going to make a couple of other smaller plants. With everything all crocheted at this point, it is time to put my first little junk crochet project together. However, after I made the pot, I thought just having one on the background left a bit too much space. I wanted to use up a little bit more than that. So what I did was actually make a second pot. I'm planning to have one pot up higher like this, and I'm going to have the second pot at a lower point, something like this. It might be a little bit big for two, but oh well, they're made now. And so because I made a second pot, I had to make a second of everything else too. So I did a second dirt. I did some extra little plants and stuff. I did some more of these string of pearls. I have two little cacti 
or what will be cacti when I finished with them and just some of these little succulents these little succulents are actually from my five minute flower pattern which I will link in the description as well in case you want to make some for a project that you're working on so put those aside for now what I'm going to do is begin by sewing my dirt insert to my first pot So for my next step, I need to decide whether I want to sew the pots on first and then attach the plants, or if it would be better to attach the plants and then sew on the pots. I'm thinking it might be easier to sew the pots on first because the plants are just going to get in the way, especially these things. So I think that's what I might go with. I'll start with this one because I'm going to place this up the top. Okay, now that the pot's sewn on, what I'm going to do is add some stuffing. And I didn't sew on the dirt yet, so I'm going to add it through there. When all the stuffing's in, I'm just going to finish sewing, and then I'm going to repeat the entire process on the second pot. Now that both the pots are attached, I'm going to add the plants. I'm not sure in what order I'm going to add the plants yet. I might put that there. Maybe the, maybe the large ones on the inside. These little ones towards the front like this. Actually, I saw those. And then I think I'll have this string of pearls on the outside. Sounds like a plan, let's go with that. The last thing I'm going to do before I finish up here is to add a chain so I can hang this on the wall. No good making wall art if you can't actually hang it on the wall. So I'm just going to find the middle here, or where I roughly think the middle is, and insert my hook. I'm just going to join my yarn with a slip stitch. Single crochet. And then I'm going to chain, I might chain 10. Four, no, 10 might be too much, we'll chain eight. Five, six, seven and eight and then what I'm going to do is go straight back into that same stitch and slip stitch and then I'll cut that and just weave in those ends And there we go. Not the prettiest thing I've ever made. The pots are probably a little bit too heavy and I did have a bit of trouble sewing them on so they're kind of wonky. But other than that, for a first effort, I think I did okay. I actually kind of like how the plants and the little succulents turned out. I did add some flowers to my cacti just to give the whole piece a little bit of color. In the future, if I create something like this again, I might not add so much stuffing to the pots because they are a little bit top heavy and I also might redesign the rim part. I think that just sticks up a little bit too high. That dirt portion I made is sitting a little bit lower than I really would like. I'd like it to sit higher so the plants are more visible. But there are some critiques and criticisms I can take on board for next time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit different from what I normally do but I am enjoying trying all these new things. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next week with a new video.